dann darfst du dich gerne schon mal setzen. Alles ist Dank. fertig aufgebaut. Dankeschön. Und ich freue mich auf unsere Panel-Diskussion. Sie nennt sich Everything in Flux, Ways towards Data-Based Traffic Management and Planning in our Cities and Region. Moritz already held the perfect impulse to this panel discussion. And since we will be having a speaker coming from Finland, this panel discussion will be taking place in in English. So I'm very delighted and asked and to the stage Maria Rautavita, Caroline Proft and Ralf Tank. Please give them a warm round of applause. So great all of you are here. I will just start right away with the topic. Well, I would like to introduce you first before, before we start right away with the topic. And I will start right over down there. Ralph, can you see me? Yeah, perfect. Yes. <laughs> it looks a little far, but we'll be fine. So, Ralph Tank, you are project man manager, administrator for traffic control systems for the city of Darmstadt, also called Mobilitäts. Amt. How long have you been working there for the Mobilitätsamt and what falls into the scope of your responsibilities maybe? Yes, um, I'm working in the Mobilitätsamt in Darmstadt since um, 19 years, near by 20 years. And um, yeah, my profession is uh, we have a real-time um, uh, traffic system, the traffic management system, and we have a huge of sensors there to detect what kind of vehicles in seconds come to Darmstadt in and out. Oh wow. And um, so we can calculate over the analytic system to the operatic system. And so we have um, a big opportunity uh, to have a complete um, change of paradigm in, in Darmstadt. So we have an, yeah, a very modern uh, fundament to have an, a new uh, possibility uh, to have uh, the control of the whole uh, traffic in Darmstadt also. Sounds good. Thank yeah. you for being here and being our guest. Yeah, thank you. I'll continue with you, Caroline. You're key account manager for Swarm Analytics. Could you maybe give us a glimpse of what Swarm Analytics does? I know that one slogan says, from video to data with Swarm Analytics, but what's the scope? What exactly does your company do? Yeah, thank you very much for having us here. And also, we as a Tyrolean startup, we are so much also happy to be here as an Austrian uh, company. What we do, we transform big data to relevant data. So we measure what's going on in the city. We are measuring what's going on uh, in the traffic, Uh, with respect to parking, and I would like to explore a bit more in, that, uh, in our discussion, um, but I leave it for here, so we do relevant data. Sounds good. Thank you for coming and making all the way from Austria to here. Maria Rautravita, I will start or go over to you. You're the director of data business unit at the data department in the Ministry of Transport and Communications in Finland. And I found out that you're working for this ministry for over 25 years. So this really fascinates me and makes me think and ask. It has to be a very good employer, the ministry, is it so? Yeah, <laughs> I would say that uh, working with the government issues has taken us already through the kind of climate awareness phase to the digital phase and the days are always in a flux in a way. So, so for us in, in the government level, the flux is the new normal, mm -hmm. it has been already for, for years. So what we need to do is to adapt to the time, so find those new next things and try to uh, provide them for the next government to make decisions on. And already now, even we are here today, we and our minds are already in the metaverse and the web tree, so, so we are now describing the, the next big flux things in our minds, yes. Very interesting, and I'm very interested in hearing about your best practices in, in Finland. So, thank you for coming. Moritz, uh, you have held your impulse already. You're head of data, sales and business development at Mobileye and you love data, I believe. What fascinates you so much about data? So, for me, data is 
so relevant for optimizing so many mobility topics. It's not only about planning or, or optimizing the, the flux itself. It's also combining and overlaying data from different sources. So I think Darmstadt is a very good, uh, good example. So taking data from static sensors of intersections, aligning it with data coming from vision sensors of us or, or tire sensors or from scooters or and, and, and using all the data to get the best result, to get the best base of decisions is, uh, is something which is uh, very relevant and which interests me in, in, in learning uh, about new data sources and, and also the, the uh, presentation from before about the mobility data space. It's a, it's a very interesting initiative of, of making people aware what kind of data is, is available and, and how we can use it to, to get our best, best uh, effort and result. Sounds good. Thank you so much for being here and joining the panel. I will start right away with the first question because data seems to be very important for traffic management or can be very important, has to be. And what are tangible benefits of deploying intelligent traffic management? And I'm looking at you, Mr. Tank, because you are the best practice in the city of Darmstadt. What are the tangible benefits you can tell us about? Yeah, I think it's for the citizens. Um, what we do in Darmstadt is we collect a lot of data, also in environmental data, a lot of uh, gases and our, uh, part particle data. We are one of the towns in Germany, we have a problem with the NOx, yes? So we have 40 own uh, sensors in Darmstadt to uh, look what is with these gases. Also we are look to the ozone, to the temperature. We have uh, five weather stations. And what we do, uh, we are looking also for the traffic. What kind of traffic comes into Darmstadt and go out in seconds. And so we can look in databases what is the re relationships bet between weather, raining, wind, cars, and so on. And um, this is a big live data storm that we have, in, and we stored it in a big databases in our analytic systems. And uh, we are look what can we do with this data to make the traffic in Darmstadt smoother. And this is the opportunity, and we can protect also our, our citizens when we de de detect critical gases in uh, some areas. So we can look what we can do with our traffic light system in these areas. And this is the future, I think. And this is also the, the databases for other public services. So we can um, take this data also to our citizens and, and can give them warning use not this car at this moment. We have a big, uh, huge problem in this area with the gases. Use perhaps uh, a tram or um, other uh, electric cars and so on. And also what we have just now a re release is a traffic pilot um, assistant, as a traffic app assistant. You can drive with your car or with your bicycle or uh, with uh, public systems and you can see in 150 meters far away what has happened with the traffic light uh, systems in front of you. And you can see uh, how can you drive over this traffic system. And this is all, this is only as a smart pal what we do. But this is a foundation for the new future by us. And um, this, I think this is not too bad. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Tank. Yeah. Ms. Raja Vicha. I would like to ask you as well, what are the benefits in deploying intelligent traffic management? I think Mr. Tank already mentioned a lot of points, but what can we maybe also learn from Finland? Yeah, I think it's important to combine that we have this bottom-up approach, the city level, the local level, and then we have the government level, because all we are the society providing better services and better quality of life for the citizens. And I think the, the ultimate goal is, of course, tangling the, the, the trickiest question, that climate adaptation, uh, how we can make accessible cities, how we can provide a better um, uh, enabling environment for businesses to make, make, make good business in, in the city, walkable cities and so on. So the ultimate goal is for the society and technology and digitalization and data uh, kind of 
tools for achieving those goals, but the goals are the same as when I started my career as well. So it's uh, tackling the exactly the same problems. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Caroline, um, Ms. Vatravita already said tools. Tools yeah. are important uh, in order to operationalize intelligent um, transport planning systems. What is needed to operationalize all these things? Do you have some tools you could share with us? Yeah, we heard it already, but what you really need are is the relevant data. And I just came up, or a quote came into my mind um, from a very um, famous traffic planner in Copenhagen. And he said once um, in a documentation, you only care what you count for. So you as cities and as regions, what do you care for? Who do you care for? And it's not only the, the cars and the trucks in your cities, it's also the vulnerable road users, naming the, the bike list, the pedestrians. And uh, we as uh, SWAM, we do count uh, next to you know trucks, cars, vans. We do also count pedestrians and cyclists. And we try to help the city to identify um, where are the crucial points, where are the very, you know, when, when they come together, where, where are the, the very uh, safety issues that you have. Um, please let me know if someone is crossing a, um, a pedestrian line and at the same time a car is arriving with like beyond 30 kilometers per hour. Please tell me there's a safety issue. And this is what we like to provide the cities with. We do not say, please do this and that, but we want to provide the data in real time. And I think this is a very important issue for that. Definitely. And what would you say are the most important or most commonly used data sources to gain insights for traffic management? Is there something every city always requests or wants? Or what are the most commonly used data sources? Caroline? Is it, is it for me? Yeah. Ah, sorry. No problem. Uh, I mean, the data sources that I just mentioned is, is, is really the, the traffic data that you would need. And then it's, it's also the way to really um, to make it as a digestible data. It, data doesn't make sense if you give it to someone and he or she doesn't know what to do with it. It has to be very easy, you know? You have to make decisions really fast and um, really decisions that lead to somewhere and that go to somewhere and uh, do not waste the money for the decisions. And um, I know there are so many more data that we can collect, but uh, we are convinced that this very sensor data is, is the key to then start about making decisions. Mm -hmm. Moritz, would you agree? Caroline just said sensor data is the key to do traffic management. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, no, very well known are, are static sensors on intersections, analyzing 24-7 what's happening, which is very crucial and relevant. Uh, floating car data about uh, traffic flows in general, aggregated historical data. Uh, uh, maps from, from providers, I mean, everyone knows them here, or TomTom, Tom are, are known data sources. But uh, there are so many new sources coming up, and I think it's, it's very relevant to, to combine and to look into these different sources. And again, this is also a good example how relevant the mobility data space can become to, to create use cases and, and, and to look into what kind of data is really relevant for my specific use case. And uh, maybe to give just one maybe not so good example, uh, I've, been, I've been to Prague a few months ago, this was before the elections uh, of the new government of the city of Prague, and the former government was the Green Party, the left wing, they wanted to, to lower the CO2 emissions, and they decided just to place everywhere cycleways, because they thought placing cycleways will increase the cyclist mobility. But because of the topography and, and the, let's say, the habitants or the habits of the habitants and, and, uh, of, of Prague didn't change anything. It was a complete contrary. They had more traffic jams. They just occur more CO2 emissions. So one very relevant data source is also the dialogue with the, with the, with the habitants of a city, right? Mm -hmm. To understand what, what is really the need. You have data to analyze what's happening, but also what is the, what's the interest of the people living in the city? So are they interested in increasing cyclist mobility? Are they interested in, I don't know, getting more car sharing services? And, and, and where to place a mobility hub? Is this maybe not always at the same time of a day the same spot? Maybe we have to also think about um, mobile mobility hubs somehow because we have the, the request of the habitants at a specific time of the day uh, in different places. And, and all these kind of analysis and, and, and taking data into consideration for, 
for creating the best solution for the people living in cities in the urban area. This is, this is our goal in the end. Sounds very good, Moritz. Thank you so much. And I, I, I heard out of it that you, one can't generalize it for a region or a city, but one has to go into a dialogue and always ask again and ask what the requests for the cities are. So uh, you now talked about a not so good example. How about we look at an example that really worked out well? What is a leading city or region worldwide when it comes to digital traffic management? And what can we learn from them? Yeah, well, uh, maybe I'll take a little uh, broader perspective on the question, if I might. Yeah, yeah the sure. operational level is important, but uh, I think uh, it was well highlighted that we need also interoperability with our uh, kind of neighboring data verticals. So the housing, the built environment, the energy sector, and therefore we need data that is also uh, usable for other purposes as well. So not going too deep in, in diving in your generic use case, but building also the inter interoperability layer so that you can exchange the data and utilize in a in a multiple um, forms and for multiple use cases. And this is also because it's public money that we are spending mostly. So the data infrastructures need to be in wise use. And therefore we need to be able to also innovate in how we uh, construct our data infrastructure and therefore the interoperability rises above all this. So maybe asking into the round, what are leading cities or region you like to look at when we are talking about digital traffic management? Hmm. Not so easy uh, to uh, Hard say it. Yeah. I can come up with one. <laughs> I mean, I have one sitting here right next to me. Uh, Darmstadt is uh, really a leader in Germany. Yeah. Um, we as Swarm, we, we talk to actually cities in, in Europe. Um, I have to point out the Nordics, uh, including Finland. Uh, we are also in Odense. This is actually our biggest city with 220 sensors. They do, as also Darmstadt, like a whole traffic system with the sensors, and then they put it out there. They, get, they provide the data to the public to the citizens that they know, ah, there's now a new street. Why is the new street there? Now I know. So actually as a support for political decisions, um, but there are many more. Also in Germany or the city of Aalen, we're there with the parking guiding system. So there are so many good, um, good examples. And um, I, I think Darmstadt is also one of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Moritz, do you have a favorite city or region you like looking at? Of course, Barcelona. Yeah. Now, I think Barcelona is really a very innovative city, not only in regard of mobility, but also in general in regard of digitization. But uh, I mean, if we, let's say, keep also the, the, the mobility segment a little aside, it's obviously the Scandinavian countries in regard of, of a digital government. Uh, I mean, this is also a big topic here in the Smart Country Convention. Let's say in Germany, we can learn and improve a lot still. Yeah. You mentioned the Nordics. Yes. Now we have Finland right here sitting. Ms. Rautavita, what are the key pillars of maybe Finland's approach to mobility data? What can we Germans learn from you? Yeah, yeah. well, you might know that uh, we are kind of an island in the north and therefore our uh, kind of economy is so reliant on, for instance, seafaring. 95% import-export goes by sea. But we are not known as a seafaring country. We are known about on our digitalization skills. And I think that explains that because we are lacking behind in everything we do, we have to be more agile and more innovative in how we do it. So we have to kind of uh, be, be in the front row. And of course, we have a Nokia tradition that uh, kind of transformed the whole Finland into a laboratory or something like that. And during the pandemic, I think we were the only country in Europe that didn't close the schools. In three days, the whole uh, amount of Finland, Finnish schools were uh, transformed into remote schooling. Mm. So, so this kind of agile uh, yeah. ways of use in digitalization yeah, and yeah, data yeah. is kind of um, how we survive. So it's a necessity <laughs> for us, and I hope you don't have to live in it. Mm. But, uh, but I think at the current situation, we are now all in, in a similar kind of situation that we have to do something fast. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, energy crisis is, uh, is uh, something that we, in which we need data in a, yeah. in a completely new way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Now, also going back or coming back to Germany, what are maybe framework conditions that are necessary, especially when we talk about governance of GATA, especially that as well? Mr. Tink. Well, I think um, the future is uh, so real time, yes. This is very important to have um, a very good uh, database, very good sensors, and um, this worked then in real time. And you can calculate uh, with the KI then in real time. And you can direct react to the traffic what's just now happened. Not more the traffic, but all the needs for the new mo mobility. Yes. And this is, I think, this is the future. Yes. Yeah, mm. sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Tank. Moritz, you said in Germany we're a little slow sometimes. Could it be that the framework work conditions aren't the best yet? Do you have a wish, if you could have a wish free, to change the framework conditions, especially when we talk about governance of data, or do you say, no, we just have to get going? So I think it's both. We have to get going anyway, So and we, we should think about not to create new barriers, but trying to think in solutions. I mean, it sounds maybe just like a generic s sentence, but it's, it, it's how it is. And we need to think about standardization so that we can uh, send data uh, from one state to the other, that not everyone is working in is, let's say, micro or e micro ecosystem, but, but that we think about uh, uh, Germany or even European-wide standardization so that it's more easy to access and share the data. Uh, um, and, and I think this is a very, very relevant uh, topic. And uh, I mean, the EU data pact is on its way. I think it needs to be adjusted a little bit. So the current version, the draft is not, let's say, as, as uh, I wish it ends. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I think this is it. So yeah, standardization, making data very easy, accessible, and, and, and shareable. Sounds very good. Thank you so much. And in order to get going, there's always one aspect that is needed, and it's called money. <laughs> and I would like to ask the audience for the next question. Do you believe that in Germany more public money should be invested in digital traffic infrastructure? If so, please raise your hand. <laughs> Yes, almost all hands go up. Thank you so much. This also proves the recent Bitcoin poll from October 2022 that says that 87% of Germans believe that more public money should be invested in digital infrastructure, traffic infrastructure and management. So if you had the uh, wish warm, if you had the free choice and could choose where you could spend public money for digital infrastructure, where would you spend it on? Yeah. Question for me? We will maybe wait a second. It'll be over soon. Okay, I'm glad they didn't start in French as well. <laughs> Mr. Tank, if you could spend the money freely on digital infrastructure, where would you spend it on? Oh yes, I have a lot of I ideas. Um, I think um, it will be good uh, to have um, this uh, money to have uh, more apps by us. Um, and we look over the town borders, yes. So we have the rhine mine area, and I think uh, that what we help build up in Darmstadt is, uh, could be an example for other towns. And so we can connect uh, the other towns, perhaps in, in, in uh, log logistic systems, yes. Uh, yeah, this is a one, one way. Um, you will have um, other possibilities uh, to have uh, new uh, uh, e-cars. Uh, as a sharing in, in, in Darmstadt. 
could be. And this is also adept in, in, in apps, yes? You can look in our apps. You, you can see perhaps in the moment uh, we have a, a bad condition uh, from the NOx perhaps, and, and you have to choose out other mo mobility, perhaps with a bicycle or with an e-car. And this is, can be uh, also the future. As only other future is our um, live uh, interfaces that, that we have. This isn't, uh, this is our data that can direct connect to the car control systems. And uh, you have better and more in information from our um, real-time system into the car. And so you know ex exactly what is happens then in Darmstadt, yes? What a route is perhaps then the best way. And, and we give uh, the, the way, this is the best way, choose this out. Or please let uh, this car uh, stand here. Um, our, uh, how our downtown is full of cars. We don't need more traffic. So please, if there's a park place and use perhaps a tram or so on. And, and, and this is the future, what I mean. And, and this is the reason I think uh, it's good to have uh, to, to take money to build this new up. This, uh, uh, up. Yes? Okay. So we definitely <laughs> need more money to implement that. Caroline, if you had a free choice, what would you spend the money on? Well, I, to, be, to be brutally honest, I mean, we, we do have a certain amount of funding probably. But the question is not whether where to spend it, but how to spend it, you know? And for that, you need data. Um, I, just a very short example in Denmark, in Ebeltoff, for example, there's a ferry. And all of the tourism, they go, they, they're crossing one little uh, commune. And the citizens there, they were so annoyed by the traffic, by, by the speeding, and they were like complaining. At the end of the day, it was only a gut feeling because data has shown with the sensors that actually there's no expensive lane or street needed that circumvents this because they were asking for that and it would have been millions of dollars, but they found a different solution. They found that there are different ways of uh, you know, um, getting the traffic through the city and uh, maybe doing some speeding signs here and there. Um, so what I opt for is please use relevant data to make very intelligent and smart decision and not just spend the money and float the market. That would be important. Very important. Thank you so much, Caroline. Ms. Rautavita. Yes, well, uh, I'm in a position to make also a wish that we get more money on digitalization because we see that, uh, especially in mobility sector, we get more things done with digitalization rather than putting more bitumen on, on the roads. So, so if I could wish, I would use the money on common infrastructure for connectivity uh, data structures, the data resources, the quality of data that we use, uh, the APIs to make it uh, accessible and interoperable, and then I would also use R&D funds for innovation and uh, skilling so that we really make out of the data that we have. Thank you. Moritz, last one. Yeah, I have totally to agree with, with all the um, meanings before and sentences, but especially also to, to Carolyn. So spend money wisely. Um, don't fund the 40th project of autonomous driving, which is not scalable. So please analyze before what are innovative solutions, what can help and, 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 and create solutions which are scalable and, and helps in the end us, the society, and, 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 and uh, not doing and funding let's say marketing relevant projects, which is nice to have, but which in the end, honestly, doesn't help anyone. And so um, yeah, this is, this is what I would wish for the future. So I'm definitely with you, and I hope uh, you get all the money you need in order to implement your dreams and wishes. Thank you so much for your insights, for coming, for sharing your knowledge, and especially for showing us many opportunities how to use data for intelligent and smart traffic management. Please give a warm round of applause to our speakers. Thank you so much. Wir kommen tatsächlich nun schon zur...